doesn't say anything about where they're born, so it kicks that record out and you don't see it. So you have to be careful. I like to go in through categories, winnow it down to one record set, and then you get a search page that's Meaning. tailored to that record. And you get better results. So I went into the marriage records. This, these are Ontario marriage, uh, marriage records. Um, I had searched on Elva Gould. I found a transcription. But up here, I can view the actual record. And there it is. That's my grandparents' marriage registration. Now what's available up there is limited only by the <coughs> privacy policies of the Ontario government. They obviously don't put births from yesterday up there. They, that would be a long time. <laughs> I don't know the exact um, blackout periods. I think it's uh, 50, I think it's 70 or 75 for births. 50 for marriages and 20 or 30 for deaths. Here's what the family search, the Mormon website looks like. They've made quite considerable changes from it to it lately and they've made it very social. So across the bottom there, you can go in and look at fan charts. Um, you can upload photos. They've gone very social on it. Um, you can put your family tree in there if you want. They also have an ability for you to help with their indexing projects where they take records and index the names. And the family book, I haven't figured out yet. But the highlighted one is where you actually search for actual records. I'm not going to go any further. That, that's a whole lecture all on its own. I said Library and Archives Canada is great for military records, and it is, and I gave you a little bit of information. I, uh, this is very compressed. Cindy's list, this is what it looks like. Oh, I guess I took out the, the actual uh, case sample I did for that. When you find the information, when you find something with a name that you think is your family, you have to look at it. Did you find what you were looking for? Was the information completely there? Um, does it conflict with anything else you have? Does it raise questions? And where did you find it? Is that source reliable? <coughs> and you have to do the math. So, if a child is born more than nine months after the death of the father, you put him in your family tree as being definitely a child. Of course you don't. You got two kids that were born two months apart. No, you grafted someone else into the family. Okay, mom was 60 years old. I don't think so. You want to look at the teenage daughter. You may be looking at an illegitimate birth. And somebody got married at age nine? Not likely. So you have to do your math. Does it make sense? Did you marry someone who was 15 to a 90-year-old man? It's been done, but it's pretty rare. Especially if they have 15 kids. Okay? And then you repeat. You go on and you find another question and you just keep going through the cycle. But keep yourself focused. Don't let yourself go off on this scattergun approach of looking for every instance of your brown family name. Okay, I said I'd try to bring in woodworking. <laughs> Here's some things that popped into my mind. Shadow boxes. If you have family heirlooms, I, my sister has done the most wonderful box with a letter from my grandmother and her wire rimmed glasses. And it hangs on her wall. Picture frames, as in this one where you've got medals in the person's uh, photo. Uh, obviously, you can restore heirloom furniture that's needing a little bit of TLC. You can build future heirloom furniture. 
Anybody else have any other ideas? I was reaching for some of this. My uh, my wife found uh, an old antique wood rack that's wall mounted, and uh, I reassembled it, and she hangs her grandmother's quilts on it. Her grandmother's passed on, so it's uh, a awesome. of quilts that she's collected. So what hobbies do you does your better half do that you could maybe display for them? I guess. Here's one that came down in my family. This is a breadboard. It didn't photograph all that well, I have to admit. But across the top it says, Waste Not. On either side there's a sheaf of grain and a little bit of extra detail at the bottom. My mother has this one. It was made for her by her grandfather. He was a master carpenter. Uh, had a uh, furniture and organ factory in Uxbridge in the 1880s. It's very precious to her. It obviously hangs on the wall. It does not cut. You don't put a knife to it. Or she'll have your head. <laughs> so I'm here with a couple of hats. One is Durham Region Branch of the Ontario Genealogical Society. We meet the first Tuesday of the month over at the library at 7 p.m., except in July and August. And as I said before, our library collections at the Whitby Library, and we have more sources up at our office, which is in the NAFCAN Tower up at the airport. This is a glance at our website and our next meeting, which, if you're interested in genealogy, you might want to come out. We've got a whole bunch of our members are going to get up and speak about free genealogy websites and how to use them. Five or ten minutes each. Here's a few of them listed actually on our branch website at the moment. So everyone's welcome. public is welcome. Come and say hello to us. Here's one we're really proud of. We're bringing over a DNA expert from London, England. Actually, we're not bringing him. He's going to be here for our annual conf provincial conference and won't be going back for a week, so we snagged him for June the 2nd, and he's going to come and give us a lot more details on how we can use DNA results to further our genealogy and solve some of our problems, including some adoption problems. <coughs> My second hat is I am running sort of a retirement business to help people with their family history. And you, I put my business cards at the back if you're at all interested. I am doing a beginner's series on behalf of the Clarington Elder <laughs> Adults Association. It's going to be held at the Curtis Community Center 10 to 12 for five weeks, April 20th to May 25th non-members of the association, it's only 26.50, that's incredibly low. I don't know how they can afford to pay me my fee. I think they're hoping to get 40 people in. And that's a whirlwind tour of the very basics of genealogy. Are there any questions? Yes, sir. I think it was a month or two ago I received an email from the government saying that they just released it was the 1910 census or maybe 1911. They, they released the 1921 census uh, about a year ago. Ancestry.ca uh, helped significantly with them in digitizing the paper and in providing an index. So at the moment it's up on the Ancestry.ca website, but if you are searching that particular uh, data set from a Canadian ISP address, it's supposed to be free for all Canadians. Well, that was my question, because I searched through the other census information, and this one, when I clicked the link, I did a search, found the record that I was looking for, and then when I clicked to get the details of the record, it to a sign-up page? Yeah. Well, it shouldn't have done that. Um, my suggestion is to go to the, the your local library branch and get them to 
um, show you how to get into the Ancestry Library Edition, and that will uh, get you the record that you want. Okay? Any other questions? Yes, sir. My, my family, the, uh, my, my father left when I was four years old. Mm -hmm. I don't know. He's obviously deceased now, but I have no idea where, when. Uh, I don't even know the date of birth. <coughs> Okay. Um, if his record of birth would be, he's probably dead. The, the, would you think that the the record of marriage is in Ontario? It is. Yeah. Okay. It is born in Ontario. And you think it would be before approximately 1923? Yes. We should be able to find that marriage record actually on Ancestry.ca. If they don't have it, then we go to the Ontario Archives. That should give you his date of birth and where he was born. Also where and when the marriage was. That might be your fastest route to find his birth information. Now where he went when he left the family, that's always problematic. Yeah. If it's a fairly unique name, we you can search all of Ontario and then you can spread out from there trying to find him uh, it, it would it would be quite an intensive search okay and that's when you need markers like what was his profession was he a Masonic member um, you know things that would 